Yeah, that hole needs to be come off and got to look at. Pretty interesting right there. This truck needs uh, new steer tires. It's going out on the road, so we might as well use these wheels and tires on Whitney. Yep, they're pretty much gone. Uh, JP was right on the money on that. <laughs> These uh, drums could be used again, but uh, not on a truck that's going out on the road right now, so I'll order some new ones, put them on this truck, put these old ones on that truck, and that'll be nice. Uh, provided they work, and I think they will. But what we'll do is we'll get this thing braced up, get that jacked up, get that wheel off, and make sure this will go on there. Uh, we'll also measure these brakes. Those are new brakes, if I remember right, on that truck. And so I should be able to get numbers off them. These are worn down pretty far. Uh, <laughs> Dang man You know what this uh That's funny, but not funny This wheel this brake is cammed over I might have to bring it down here So this is what happens a lot of times you'll see a truck it just the brakes lock up on trailer or something and uh, you see it skid the wheel off the ground or off the road and like 200 foot and and there's uh flat spots on tires and and then they say oh man you know the brakes cammed over so what happens is these brake shoes get so thin that when you apply the brakes this is how the brakes get applied right here and when this when this when the Air pressure comes into this pot, pushes down on here, which is a lever that rotates this S-cam. And the reason why they call that an S-cam is because you see it's shaped like an S, right? And then these brake pins, or rollers, ride up this S-cam. And as this S-cam turns, this radius becomes larger and it pushes out on these brakes. But you can see that this S-cam is all the way over and these are now on the point, so that's cam. That's called cammed over. Um, the brakes will never return, and they'll they'll just wear right out. Like this one probably was driven quite a bit. You keep the brakes adjusted up, and eventually it cams over. And that's why that one didn't turn so free. So, yeah, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. 
and JP did tell me uh, right from the go that it needs brakes bad and uh, or front brakes bad and he was right so anyways that's the first uh, first cammed over brakes that I've uh, had on property so it's nice that we get to show you what that means um, so chances are these brakes are gonna be the same as X's brakes so we'll, like I said we'll get this uh, we'll get this set on a wheel probably and uh, yeah I have a I have a bald I think I have a bald 22.5 over there we'll just bolt a wheel on a couple of bolts to set it down then we won't need it sitting on a jack stand and I'll get brakes and drums coming for tomorrow and we'll uh, knock that out we'll also take to check those wheel bearings and check the grease in there and make sure that's good um, it feels good feels maybe a little loose um, but we'll get a look and make sure that the bearings are good and the grease is good we'll put new brakes on we'll clean this all up make sure these see we got some grease on this side so it probably needs a seal and uh, maybe an s cam bushing but we'll know that once we get it all apart i'll probably take it apart today matter of fact because uh uh, that way I can be ahead of this S cam. Now S cams on this um, are just the same as doing S cams on anything. You know it's too long for the S cam uh, to come out with the hub on, so the hub will have to come off. And the S cam will come out and put a new seal and stuff in there. So we got to take this off and check check the bearings, anyways. So we'll get this off, get it all cleaned up in there, get that S cam apart, get these brakes off, get that S cam out check those bushings see if we can order some bushings and seals and then we'll do a full brake job on this truck um, yep 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 I'm yep yep so anyhow let's get a wheel on here and uh, get it back down on the ground and get X jacked up and see about see if these drums fit that these brake drum manufacturers have the details on their website and if you if you have a drum but you can't find any markings on it you can measure you can measure this pilot hole these stud holes the depth from this surface to the ground the depth of this surface here and the diameter and you can order drums based on that but you know it's an FLD people say they're all the same I'm gonna look up that part number and uh, see what's available and uh, we'll also check the brakes on X because I think they're new and I think you can still see the uh, uh, part number of the shoes and that way I can order two drums and a set of shoes and these drums can go in those shoes and bing bang boom Bob's your uncle will be back all right we're gonna we're just gonna stick this wheel on backwards it's just gonna be holding the truck up this is a horrible tire uh, slick bald probably a bad idea but uh, So, maybe that wasn't the smartest thing. Because you know this truck's had aluminum wheels on its whole life, right? So the last inch of the threads are really rough. But, you know, it's on there. Hopefully it'll hold the weight. Super sketchy. But hopefully it <laughs> hopefully it don't blow out. Uh, where's my dang old shovel when I need it? Alright, 
so. It looks like it may. So, one thing you don't want to do, and I just did it, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So I have that thing on a jack, right? And then I lean this tire up underneath the cab. Never do that. That was a bad move. Because let's say I laid it over there, right? And then I walk away and that jack lets down. That jack can go down about 10 inches. So that means that tire would have been up to about here. And uh, that's an easy way to ruin a perfectly good truck. So I'm looking at these brakes and they're uh, they're different. They're not 100% different, but they do have a different style roller. This one uses the fat rollers. And uh, yeah, the shoes are much, much different on this truck. So the chances are we're not gonna use the same brakes. All right, we're trying to get all these pieces in here. So this drum is nine inches. So if we come in here and we measure nine inches, that drum is about that drum would be hanging over three quarters of an inch on the inside which that's too much also these shoes are four inch shoes and they're only uh, they're 15 and a half inch shoes so these shoes are four inches as well and These are 17 inch shoes. Uh, let, me, uh, let me just measure that again. 17 and a half. Yeah, they're different. Uh, these drums are not gonna work on that truck. And we won't be able to get We won't be able to get uh, brakes based off of these uh, you know I'm not super disappointed in that actually um, uh, I'm not super disappointed in that this drum could work just fine. I could get away with those drums. Uh, not 100% sure. Um. Hmm. I might could use those drums. I'm gonna take these lug nuts inside. I have plenty more, so I have enough to do the majority of the trucks now. But anyhow, we're gonna see what we can find for drums and for brakes. I'll send some pictures of those brakes around a little bit. See if anybody recognizes them. They're four inch. Uh, they're for a 15 inch hole in the uh, in the drum. This drum says max diameter 15. Uh, 
0.120 so there's 120 thousandths that you can turn those drums or wear those drums out before they're gone so it's a 15 by 4 brake it's 4 inch offset from the hub it's a 9 it's a 8 and 3 quarter inch pilot these are inch and a quarter bolt holes and so with that information I came up with uh, Gunite 3800X so we're gonna hope for the best see if we get some shoes and let's get these brakes done and uh, we'll see you okay test 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 all right guys so I decided uh, I think I know the pieces that I need for this for these brakes now this is a standard Eaton 15 by 4 brake kit on this truck and a 3800X drum pretty positive of that done some research looks like that's it so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna get this jack back under there get her jacked up and uh, get that wheel back off we're gonna get the hub off check those bearings out get the brakes off clean that whole hub up real nice get the uh, S cam out check out the S cam bushings make sure they're good to go if not find out what they require and get some new ones with some seals so when we get these parts probably by end of the week this truck will be uh, ready to just get a full brake job and I'm also going to order some rear airbags um, if they're just a standard airliner two airbags I actually need 12 of them because all three of the FLDs need them and uh, it's possible that it's the same nope the the Franny takes the convoluted bags but anyways let's get this off let's get this part let's get this cleaned up let's get these brakes ordered and uh, then we'll get the wheel put back on and uh yeah we'll see how it goes yeah i sat there watching for a while my ain't got the styrofoam got another box came out it was still not on fire you want to do me a favor you want to get the water back up get a hose on Get this washed down with uh, Dawn to get this oil on its way out of my life. I mean, if you don't mind doing it, that'd be cool. I wish the sun, if the sun wasn't so far over there when it came up, it would have dried this area. But since that's not a thing, bing, bang, boom, Bob can't be your uncle. Yep. All right, so... Well, Jessica cleans that oily mess off the asphalt that I made earlier. We're going to go ahead and get this hub cover off. It's really a bearing cover. Uh, oil cap, if you will. And we'll clean this thing up good and stick a coat of paint on it as well. Usually you can't just pull them off like that, but apparently today I have superhuman strength. Okay, so it had barely any oil in it, um, but when I look at the oil and I smell the oil, it's clean. I don't see any metal in it. I've got just enough sunlight to, to just peek into the oil a little bit. Looks pretty good, so we'll get this, this cotter pin out. Take this off, pull that off, clean this hub up, get that bearing or that seal number, and check these bearings out, make sure they're good. You want to see what Mama's doing? There's Mama right there.
Hey, if you wash the truck, it doesn't hurt my feelings. What I usually do when I'm doing these cotter pins, and you guys can chime in down there in the comments and tell me what you do, but let me get this cleaned off so you can see it. And so what I'll do is I'll get this bearing set, and I'll put the cotter pin in with the long side forward, and then I'll grab it and I'll bend it up out of the way. And then I'll reach in there and cut the short leg off because all this does all bending that out does is keep this from working its way back out of there. And actually, because of the way this cap is, you don't even have to bend it. Because if you leave it full length, it can't come out. But stick it in, long leg forward, pull the long leg up, peen it over, snip that one off. Then you only have to push that one down, it'll come right out. You don't have to try and unpeen that other end. But it's up to you. That's just what I do. Uh, Anyway, there's evidence of the bearing rolling on the race, but it's smooth to the touch. There's no ridge. So chances are it's in good shape. And we'll let this, we'll pull this to the edge and let it run out. Another thing that's probably good to do that I didn't do is uh, use a clean drain pan. If you wash your drain pan, get it clean of all contaminants and then use that clean drain pan to uh, drain your grease out your hub oil uh, then you can see if there's any debris that specifically came out of the, the hub I didn't do that uh, so I can't show you what I would do because I just didn't do it and it's kind of a you know, dick move on my part, but it is what it is. Did I say that out loud? Okay. Here's our spring. One spring, two spring, red spring, blue spring. I think that's how that goes. All right, Mama, thank you. Huh? You sprayed me? Oh, I didn't feel nothing. No worries, lady. Um, anyway, so my cardio is bad and I'm aware of it and uh, also I'm a pretty big dude, you know, 6 foot 215 and uh, I never have been a cardio machine, but my heart's in good shape so you guys don't have to worry about that. I've been to the doctor, been to the cardiologist, I'm in good shape for my age, how many blockage. Nothing they could spend any money on. And believe me, they wanted to spend some money. Uh, but nothing they could find to spend any money on. So don't worry, I'm good. Uh, and I am aware of it and working on it too. So keep that in mind. All right, so this is the way the brakes work. Um, so these, it put these shoes pivot here. The brakes um, are slightly inside the dimension of the drum and then this is an s cam and what happens is these brakes roll on this s cam and you see as that s cam gets applied these brakes push outward and that pressure it's what goes in the drum now let's talk about this uh brake chamber this is an air chamber there's a diaphragm in there let's make sure you can see what i'm talking about okay this is an air chamber the diaphragm in there when you apply the brakes it pushes that air inside this chamber and over comp over overcomes the spring that is designed to return it and as that pushes down that pushes on this lever and now 
you might get 90 pounds 60 to 90 pounds of air pressure in here but because of the size of this diaphragm that increases the psi that this uh, plunger comes out and then because this is a a 90 degree uh, a 90 degree lever that multiplies the the pressure from this out on this point and then as this ramps out these shoes go up against the drum and that's how your brake works now there's two types of chambers um, and I don't know if that's a fact for the fronts or just for the rears but there's a short travel and long travel and the only difference is the amount of travel that plunger will actually go the pressure is the same inside for the whole length of the travel but some of them are designed to be longer travel so as this brake drum heats up and what causes a brake fade on a semi truck that has drum brakes is that when you put these abrasives up against the brake drum it creates heat heat causes uh, iron to expand so as these brakes apply friction to stop it creates a lot of heat transfers that braking energy into heat and that heat causes that drum to swell and make the hole bigger so the brakes lose effectiveness because the stroke that's involved in pushing these out is shorter than the drum gets bigger now there's a couple ways to combat that one is by high quality drums made with high quality steels that limit the amount that the drum will actually grow and at the rate the drum grows and two use a longer stroke capability in your chamber which as the drum size increases the brakes uh, expand due to the longer travel of the stroke and keeps the brakes in contact with the drum longer now with drum brakes you'll always have brake fade you'll feel it you'll feel it kind of immediately you got your truck um, all brakes are all adjusted you get out there and you touch the pedal and man that thing's reactive by the time you've stopped two or three times in town from 30 40 miles an hour now you have a, you can feel it in your foot if you're observant you have less brake authority than you did and imagine that coming down a mountain if you're one of those guys that is in the wrong gear and you're going to have to ride your brakes these things are going to get hot quick within the first couple of minutes these things are going to be glowing red and you're going to have full uh, expansion on your drum and your travel is going to be gone on your uh, chamber and you're going to have brake fade and you're going to be going 100 mile an hour with no way of slowing the truck down so uh, you guys all know that everybody who drives a truck knows that that was more for people who don't drive trucks but are going to start driving trucks because they love my channel um, anyways so we take the brakes off you know it's the same story uh, these brakes do have a uh, they do have a label but unfortunately it's just a paper label and it's a barcode so there's no part number on it uh, yeah we might clean these up just see if there's a part number but I'm pretty confident I'm about 100% positive that those are just eaten uh, 4x15 brakes these are the rollers that are designed to roll up and down this S cam and push those shoes out into the drum so this is an S cam and the reason why they call it is because this is shaped like an S and uh, this is just basically a drive shaft that connects the uh, the torque this this arm is a torque arm basically it's a slack adjuster because it takes the slack out between the brake shoes and the drum by rotating the S cam on its axis but what I really want to talk about is the fact that this is a torque arm this amplifies the amount of torque that's on this end based on this 90 degrees off of this chamber you guys can get into more science than that I'm not a genius well I am a genius but sometimes I have a hard time explaining to people how smart I actually am that's a joke by the way but uh but anyhow I hope, hope that gives you a general idea now you see that there's there's grease on this S cam and the reason is there's a seal back here so when you grease this tube which greases this S cam these bushings are 
are warm, but they're not they're not horrible. I would run these again. But uh, we're probably going to take this off anyway, so we'll just stick a new one on. But there's a seal back here. So when you grease this tube, which greases the bearings in here, bushings, uh, this seal is supposed to make the grease go out this end. Because uh, you know is when you're greasing a greaser, a wheel bearing, a, a, a spindle nut, whatever on your trailer or whatever, tie rod end, whatever you're greasing, you know when you're pumping that grease in, the object is to pump fresh grease in and expel the old dirty grease and usually there's a place for it to expel and on an SCAM it's supposed to expel out here between the the SCAM housing and the slack adjuster but what happens is that gets because nobody ever cleans anything nobody cleans the grease out of that you know you should clean the grease out of that and make sure that there's enough room for the grease to continue to expel out there each time you grease it. Wipe that stuff off. But what happens is it cakes all up with road grime and brake dust and dirt and all that other crap. And then when you're pumping that in there, it's actually pressurizing and it's going to blow it past this seal. And also the seal just gets, uh, even if you do that, even if you clean it, you're just delaying the inevitable. Because as this S-cam bushing wears out in here, and this one has, this one... This one has a considerable amount of slop, not as much as the back one that was broken. But as that's wallowing around in there, that's moving that whole seal around in there and wearing that seal out, and then it's eventually just going to fill up with grease. So uh, I do, I do um, myself when I grease a vehicle, I wipe all that excess grease off so that it doesn't build up all that stuff and potentially cause a problem. But no matter how clean you get it. If these bushings, when these bushings wear out, it's going to kill the seal and it's going to grease the brakes. And as soon as you start pumping uh, grease, molly grease, into this brake drum, it's going to get on the pads and you're going to and you're going to kill them. So um, that's my preaching for today. We'll get this scraped down. We'll get that uh, slack adjuster off in a minute. We'll pull this S cam out. We'll clean all that up and let you see what it looks like. Um, we still got to take that seal off the hub. Get the bearings out and get all that mess into the parts washer and get that all cleaned up so we can see part numbers look at those bearings good possibly order new bearings this uh this bearing is a it's interesting uh it may need a new one but we'll get those all out and get them clean we'll get this clean we'll get that off we'll get this off we'll get that looked at and we'll get it figured out all right let's get after it so i get distracted i get distracted from time to time and uh I get off on cleaning tangents and I shouldn't but this thing does need cleaned and it's going to get cleaned anyways but I'm just going to get after scraping some of the gunk off of it uh, while it's right out here and I can con I can contain the crap it's not getting in my parts washer um, I need a new parts washer I'd like to get a one that uses detergent instead of solvent and uh I'd like to have to where I can put my pieces in there and, uh, you know, go turn the thing on and have it heat the water and use the detergent to get everything clean. Because I'd really love to not spend the manual time scraping all the gunk off, cooking stuff. And uh, But the problem is they're expensive and, and they take time to maintain as well. And I just, I don't have any, I don't have any employees. Um, you know, you guys know it's just me out here right now. Um, I'm looking to change that uh, soon because once the trucks hit the road, I'm going to need a guy that can, you know, do multitasking. Like, truck breaks down, grab grab another truck and on the tow rig and head out there and swap out the truck so we can keep those loads moving and bring the truck back and you know do whatever needs to be done to it um, engine transmission rear end you know a lot of times we'll send them out there with the shop truck and just have them fix it wherever it's sitting but uh, that's not gonna always be a thing so we're gonna I need somebody that can have uh, do all that stuff
Okay, so this one, normally, and I say normally, uh, but there's a snap ring like I tried to describe to you that you spring out and put on there and let in and it goes in, but this one's just a spring clip itself, and all of the spring tension is in this part right here, and so they slide it in, and it stretches over and then goes back down, and then this little groove right here is what keeps it on, because there's not a lot of you know not a lot of pressure trying to pull this off but then and this is a slack adjuster and uh, it's greased up really nice so somebody was taking care of it and then let's see can you see the S cam all right so now this S cam can come out okay And then we can stick our fingers up in there, feel it. It doesn't feel bad. I, I think I have a, a kit that'll work on this. Um, so what I'll do is I will uh, take this seal out and this S cam out. And uh, or this seal out and then the bushing out and get a look at it. But it may be it may be all right. It doesn't look horrible. Um, it's worn a little bit. I hate feeling like there's a spider crawling on me, but right now it feels like a spider crawling on me. I'm gonna take this seal out and. Uh, Okay, and we'll take this bushing out. Come on now. If you remember, uh, these things are kind of tough to get in because <clears throat> well, because they're intended to be that way. A lot of work, a lot of work. Get it out of there, a lot of work. I'm looking at this S cam, it looks like it's in really good shape. And uh, so we shouldn't have any trouble. There we go. And we'll feel that. It's not bad. It's really not bad at all. We'll clean them both up. Oh. I feel that. I feel that space in there that uh, keeps that bushing from getting pushed back. It's a little sharp. Come on, get out of there. Come on, get out of there. This thing's in good shape. Uh, we'll clean it up real good. Clean this bushing up real good. But I don't even think we need to change that bushing, really. Uh, it's in good shape. We will have to put a new seal in there because I hurt that one getting it out. But let's go. So, clean this cam up. And we'll show you. There's some wear, but not, not like what was on that back one. And these are going to be something I'm going to have to eventually figure out how to source. Um, so, these rollers... You know, from years of use, these rollers have, you know, polished and even worn slightly the S cam, but it's it's on the ramp, not at the top of the ramp. And the top of the ramp is where, and it's kind of on the top of the ramp too. You can see some wear in there, uh, but these are these look like they're rough cast, not machined, and that's why you get a roller instead of a instead of like a cam lobe. So 
you know they're going to wear a little bit this one's not in bad shape uh, this oops this SKM this is the bushing this goes in that direction uh, and so then this slides in it and there's a little bit of slop in there but uh, this is an Eaton SCAM bushing should be something like easy I can get a hold of um, I, I'm not afraid to reuse this one there's you know it is just a plastic bushing it's not a it's not an end-all be-all problem if we don't get one because uh, it is in pretty good shape still but I will send pictures of these to my parts guy and uh, see if he can get them this seal has a part number on it which is good and uh, again that part number is 100 5846 national and uh, that might lead us to what bushing this is as well so that's kind of cool it looks like these two are the same size and I also I'm going to go and look and just see if my bushings are the same and if they are maybe I'll just use the ones I have we right back all right so the cam stuff that I have for the back is not the same as the front obviously the uh, shaft and the slack adjuster and all that is uh, much less uh, heavy duty for the front brakes as they are for the rears so we're just gonna cleaned off um, actually that's yeah that is a seal and uh, I'm going to use just a little brake cleaner alright so <clears throat> I got it all apart and uh, I got it cleaned up pretty good uh, for the most part spindle's got a little bit of grind mark on it right here not sure what that's all about but it makes it tough for the, bo the bearing going uh, so what do I have so far I have an Eaton 15 by 4 brake kit I need I need two bearings uh, I don't if I can use these if they don't have them but I got a Timken 3782 and a Timken Hotel Mike 21 2049 um, they're both usable this bearing is old probably been in there a long time I see some pitting on the rollers and also where I knocked it out of there got a little little ding in the cage which I can polish up and reuse it's not that big of a deal but I'd like to get two new ones the races look fine um, I need a uh, seal and the seal part number is on the inside so that's good um, this is all cleaned up. I am going to check the uh, the uh, yeah. three shims on the inside and the bushing. Anyways, it comes as a kit, so it'll have inside and outside. We'll see. We'll put the shaft back in and just see what the inside's like. Um, these three, these three uh, jobbies I'll just leave right on there and they're not going anywhere. The grease will hold them. Uh, shims. So I'll probably just grease this up real good, bag it. Um, I won't put the hub back on which means I will put a jack stand under it because I don't leave it on my jack all night. So I'll probably get a jack stand in here down all the way and put it up under there and let it down on it. And then this truck will be uh, done as far as I can go right now. 
and uh, I would like to take while the day is still kind of young I'll grease this up bag it get that on the thing put the hood back down take the grill out uh, this hood is unbonding the same as the other one so I'd like to try and figure out what to do about that on this hood this hood uh, already is kind of uh, uh, Mad Max so that's fine we may put some plates on the inside and run screws through might put some strips on the inside run screws through from the outside we'll see how that goes might be a strip on the outside strip on the inside do, 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 do. I don't know um, but I'm just gonna clean up the rest of my pieces have uh, this big washer also have this nut Grease that spindle up and bag it. trying to be a dog. 